All right, let's talk about Arch Linux today. Couple things about this is most people think it's unstable or it's not as good as other Linux distributions, uh, mainly because it'll break and other things because the user that uses it does something silly. So let's talk about what not to do and to make Arch Linux just as stable as Debian and all the other Linux distributions. So let's talk about Arch Linux. Now, it's hot here. It is like I had a pullover, I had to take it off. I, I don't know what the hell's going on with the temperature, but I'm, I'm regretting wearing jeans right now. <laughs> so with that said, let's get into this before I just start sweating all over the place. Uh, Arch, it is a fantastic distribution, but it's badly misunderstood. Most people think it's unstable, but really it's the user making things unstable. So let's get into what not to do. And the not to do starts with updating every single day. Some people like just have this compulsion to update every single package, be on the absolute bleeding edge, which is a complete mistake. Don't do this. You can update once a week or whatnot, but you're just gonna drive yourself mad by updating every single day. And in that same vein, a lot of people don't actually keep backups, like good backups. I'm talking time shift and be backing up their system states. That's extremely important that you have proper backups. I can't emphasize that enough. That's why I'm always saying use time shift. And if you only have one hard drive, use the BetterFS snapshot ability. When you build out Arch, if you use BetterFS and time shift, you'll literally have restart points and it literally will restore within a second or two. That's the power of BetterFS and utilizing that with Arch Linux. So if you're doing it, set up TimeShift and BetterFS. It's a little bit cumbersome to set up at the initial go, but uh, I'm gonna go revisit BetterFS and TimeShift so you have a better understanding of it. So now that you're actually keeping good backups, you're not updating every single day, uh, maybe once a week, like I, I suggest, what next? What else do people do to really break Arch? And the next one is not so much uh, something everyone does, but I use the Linux LTS kernel. Now I have about a year or two old on my actual hardware, so I don't need the latest and greatest kernel. There's very few performance bumps I get from it. Uh, there are some with uh, some of my AMD cards where I might run a little bit newer. But for the most part, LTS, I'm fine sacrificing a little bit of performance to get the stability. And if that's not for you, and let's say you have like, let's say a 5700 XT AMD card, you don't want to be on an LTS kernel. You need to be on that bleeding edge because that's where the support for that card is. So to remedy this, I wanna go ahead and jump on the desktop here and kind of showcase how to pin a Linux kernel because there's times where let's say 5.1 worked a little bit better than 5.2 and 5.3 on my 2700 AMD chip. And to pin that, I had to actually edit the comp file. So I'm gonna jump over on the desktop real fast and kind of showcase that for you. All right, so let's talk about holding packages in Arch because I think this is vital, especially when you find a good Linux kernel that just suits you and then you just want to stay on it. Or let's say it's at the end of 5.4 and I think 5.5 is the next one coming up. I like to hold that package back a good week or two, maybe even up to a month, uh, depending on my environment. But I never want to update to the latest and greatest kernel as soon as it hits a new, uh, a big version. So when it's a major version upgrade, I like to stick back on the old version for just a little bit. Uh, and this is how I do it. I'm in my terminal, I go pacman-syu, and we're gonna need to do this as sudo, of course. And then we're presented with all this stuff. Now most people just go ahead and hit yes to this and then not look, but if we look here, we can see that the Linux kernel is, I have two installed. I have the LTS version, and then I also have the regular Linux version right here. Now I run LTS, but I always say install both. Even if you don't have any plans of running LTS, just get the package installed. That way you have options in case a kernel update does happen and you can't boot. So I always install both on every install. But for this one, let's say we're on 5.4.3 or Let's see what uh, packages we have installed. We can do pacman-q, and then we're gonna just grep Linux. 
and you'll see we're actually on 5.4.3. Let's say we, for whatever reason, wanted to stay on this kernel. This is simply Linux. And then let's say I wanted to stay on the LTS, which is 89, which if it's an LTS, I say just leave it alone. You don't need to ignore it because LTS is pretty much proven. So I always let these LTS releases because it's only small subversion increases and uh, they never move LTS to any kind of unstable uh, kernel. So very important to know. So let's pin 5.4.3 and act like that's our stable version we want to do. So we'll just do a sudo nano etc pacman.conf. And you can look through here, but there's one where it says ignore package. And all we need to do in this ignore package field is put any packages we want to ignore. So if we want to ignore Linux, we'll just go ahead, do that, and exit. And then we'll just do another pacman syu. And let's see if that package is there now. And if we look, we got LTS going back through. And you'll see Linux is no longer anywhere to be found in this line. Uh, that's because it's staying on it. It's ignoring that package. And that's what we want. So this is the power of holding it. And then I personally boot into LTS, like I said, um, to obviously check, just do it SR and you can see what you're on. So uh, for this, I'll probably go ahead and push through this update as it's moving to subversion 91 for the LTS kernel. Um, and that's perfectly fine. Uh, LTS, like I said, upgrade, but regular Linux, if you're on that bleeding edge and arch, if you find a good one and you want to just stick on that one, by all means, follow these instructions, stick on it. And if you see like a new version come down the pipe, don't just jump right to it. So now that you have control of your kernel, you're not doing updates every single day and you have proper backups, these things will be fine. Now there's still one more thing I see every Arch user do that is just horrible. And that is installing out of date packages. If you install out of date packages, you're gonna end up breaking your installation. And if you break your installation, it's gonna be very sad. So do not do that. It's very important. If you see something on the AUR, and I'm gonna show a desktop clip real fast of what not to do as far as the packages go. If it's red and it says hadn't been updated in a year or six months, don't install that package. Also, when you go to update or use your AUR updater, look at the very bottom. And if it says these packages are flagged out of date, you need to remove them and not use that AUR. It's very important not to use out of date AUR packages, which most people break. I know the first time around, I myself fell into this trap and ended up breaking my install. So that's really it when it comes to making Arch stable. It's very important to follow these rules. I wish I knew these rules and laid them out and did more research prior to getting on Arch because I initially thought Arch was not stable and really it was me not making it stable. So it's very important to uh, watch out for these things when you go to Arch because I think if everyone knew these things, Arch would have probably 80% of the market share because it is so awesome just installing whatever package you need, being up to date. You don't have to mess with a whole bunch of repositories and a whole bunch of junk like you do with a lot of the Debian based stuff. And that's not a knock against Debian. Debian's just geared towards stability and really, really old packages. Now, having said all that, if you follow these rules, you're going to be okay. Arch is a fantastic distribution, but these golden rules are not to be broken. It's very important that you follow them and you're gonna have a wonderful time. Now, I'm gonna make a separate video upcoming about Debian versus Arch. And really, it depends on you as a person on what you want to choose. Too much uh, people, I think, have misconceptions about both. I think both are fantastic distributions, but I wanna cover that in a future video. But with all that said, let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below. And as always, thank you to all my patrons. Without you, I couldn't make videos like this one. And I'll see you in the next one.